Now we will start with the NCRT class 8 geography chapter 4 that talks about agriculture. Now uh, let us uh, start with the various kinds of economic activity and why we will be studying agriculture topic today. When we classify economic activities there are majorly three activities that we classify in the primary, secondary and the tertiary activity. When we say primary activity that means we are using product directly from the nature. So, for example, agriculture, fishing, hunting, gathering. So, all these are kind of primary activities which involve direct interaction with the nature. When you are processing this primary activity, you require secondary sector to be developed and that sector is mainly manufacturing. Under the tertiary sector, which talks about the various services, you have services related to banking, advertisement, trade, transport. So, all these are tertiary sector. So, as you can see, agriculture falls into the primary economic activity. So, under this, we will be studying agriculture. And in the next topic for NCRT, we have industries, which is a secondary sector. So, we will be understanding agriculture today. Now, if we look on to the global picture, we have nearly 50% of the total people who are engaged into agriculture. In India, it is nearly two-third of the population that is engaged with agriculture. So, agriculture definitely forms a major or substantial portion of the total economic condition. Now, the word agriculture is derived from two words that is agar plus culture. Agar means soil and culture means cultivation. So, cultivation on soil is what is agriculture. Now, if we have the various terms that you can see, agri plus culture, that is cultivation on soil. Then you have sericulture, that is cultivation of silkworms. Then you have pisciculture, that deals with fishes. Viticulture, which deals with grapes. And finally, horticulture, which deals with fruits and gardening. So, these are the various commonly talked about uh, terms that we relate or associate with culture and we have the various functions that we have seen here. Now, what is the prerequisite condition or the primary condition for agriculture to develop? The primary condition is first the climate and secondly the soil. So, if the climate is optimum, so under climate we classify this as temperature and rainfall and some factors that would be considered would be for humidity and for some crops we might also see the frost conditions or the frost free days which is important for cotton cultivation. So, the climate and the soil are important parameters. Again under the soil you have the various kinds of soils, the black soil, red soil, alluvial soil, loamy soil and so on. Now, what is the arable land? Arable land is the land on which a crop can grow or the land that is fertile. So, on this global picture, you have the regions marked with purple, re purple shades and all these are the arable regions of the world. So, you have the arable sections which are marked here on the world map. Now, what are the prerequisites or the conditions required for processing the agriculture crop? the inputs and the uh, final outputs. So, if we classify simply the agriculture into the various processes, we can say you have the inputs and the outputs that are important. So, output would be ultimately the crop, the kind of crop, the yield of crop, uh, the per cubic density, I could say how much cropping has occurred during the time the cropping intensity and the agricultural productivity. However, when it comes to input, it is mainly the machinery, the technology, the seeds, the various chemicals and the methodology that is employed that is plowing, sowing, spraying and so on. So, these are the major inputs. Now, again, these inputs can be categorized into further subsections. You have the physical inputs as well as the human inputs. So, again the important categorization for the inputs is either physical input or human input. Under physical input, it would be the rainfall condition, the temperature, the soil, the nature of uh, uh, slope or the land pattern. 
and finally the amount of sunshine under the human inputs you have the labor machinery chemicals and storage which are the four basic primary inputs which are required for agriculture crop now you have the various types of farming we'll classify the types of farming primarily under two categories first is the subsistence uh, subsistence farming and next is the commercial farming so subsistence farming and commercial farming now as the name implies commercial farming is implied for commercial use so that means we are not producing for ourselves or for our family but it is for commercial use it, it is meant for say the nation or for the export purposes even however subsistence as the name name denotes is mainly for the household purpose so the uh, the recent family and the close by family if you could consider that that would be a subsistence farming again subsistence farming requires less technology and huge amount of household labor this subsist uh, subsistence farming can further be classified into primitive or intensive farming so intensive farming means the plot size is very small and there are huge number of labor that are employed on that small plot size it uses very primitive and simple technologies and it is highly labor intensive common examples would be rice wheat cultivation and maize cultivation specifically in the highly polluted areas of say ganga brahmaputra region in india and the southeast asia so this is a region where you have intensive subsistence farming the next is primitive subsistence farming which is further classified as either shifting cultivation or nomadic herding now nomadic herding is common in the desert areas so what happens is uh, the tribes there or the people there are mainly nomads that means they do not have a fixed house or a permanent house and they move from one place to another they usually have uh, keep animals like sheep camel yak and goat and then they have the products from these animals like milk uh, wool you have the hide which is used as uh, leather so you have the products from these animals which is mainly used it is primarily found in the desert areas or a very hilly terrain so you have examples as sahara central asia rajasthan and regions of jammu kashmir specifically the ladakh valley with yak as a predominant animal there now what is shifting cultivation shifting cultivation involves cultivation on more than one plot of land so let's say this is a village and you have six small plots of land you grow uh, you grow crop a in season say january to february in this plot and then you move to another region in say next month say june to december and you grow crop b here what would happen after you have grown this crop this region the soil fertility would decline so the next season you have to shift to another land to grow the crop and then so on and so forth so you will shift to 4 5 6 and then after that it would be a period of year or more and you would shift back to the first patch of land where you started so this is what is shifting cultivation where you move from one farm to another region and then so on and finally come back to the same area after a period of one or two or three years and this is what is known as slash and burn cultivation because you are removing everything from the first region you are burning that out and you are moving to the next patch of land this is common in the tribal areas still today specifically in the amazon basin the parts of tropical africa and regions of southeast asia and northeast india where the tribal population is still predominant so these are the various types of subsistence farming which are mainly done for the household a country like india is basically focusing on subsistence farming now the next is commercial farming commercial farming as we said it's made for commercial use so it aims to sell out the produce into the market it employs huge amount of machineries and large machineries for cultivation there are 
three basic types of commercial farming that are involved. The first is the commercial grain farming, the mixed farming and finally the plantation agriculture. Commercial grain farming talks about cultivation of wheat maize at large scale in huge farms with hectares and hectares of land with uh, well defined machineries and equipments which are kind of semi autonomic or auto autonomous. So then you have uh, countries like United States and Europe which commonly focus on a commercial grain farming method where you have huge availability of land, large availability of land with less density of population. The next is mixed farming. Mixed farming is meant for farming for food, for fodder for animals and along with that you are growing livestock, you are rearing livestock there. So you have examples like Europe, Southeast Australia, New Zealand, Argentina and South Africa where you have mixed farming that is common. So you have all the three goals that are met into the same region. You are preparing food for the common people, you are providing fodder for the animals and finally you are rearing the livestock there. The next is the plantation cultivation. The plantation cultivation is cultivation of specific crops which requires large amount of capital and labor. Now this plantation cultivation was introduced by the Britishers specifically throughout the globe. So for example, let's say in India, they introduced rubber plantation in Kerala and tea plantation in the Northeast Hills. So the idea was there is large availability of labor that is present and the capital that they can invest in the country and then they would establish huge plantation forms farms and those would be exported to other countries. So the common crops which are used for plantation are tea, coffee, sugarcane, cashew nuts, rubber, banana and cotton. The common examples for these crops are rubber uh, plantations in Malaysia, coffee plantations in Brazil, tea plantations in India and in Sri Lanka as well. So these are the types of commercial farming that we have discussed. Now what are the major crops? Uh, as we know, there are few of the major crops that you might have heard of off and on, like rice and wheat, the most common of the cereals. So rice is a tropical and a subtropical crop which requires high temperature, high humidity and rainfall, commonly found in the coastal areas of India along with China, Sri Lanka, Japan and Egypt. Then you have wheat cultivation which requires moderate temperature and rainfall. You have United States, Canada, Argentina, Russia, Ukraine and Australia. In India specifically, you have winters which is the prime season for wheat. Then you have millets. Millets is a coarse grain. Since it's a coarse grain, uh, you have crops which require less rainfall and less temperature as compared to wheat and rice. The common millets are jawar, bajra, ragi, uh, commonly grown in Nigeria, China, Niger and parts of semi-arid parts of India. Maize cultivation is seen in moderate temperature where lots of sunshine is available. Abundant cultivation in North America, Brazil, China followed by Canada, India and Mexico. Then you have cotton. As I said, cotton is a unique crop that requires at least 210 days which are frost free. Uh, frost -free. Then you have light rainfall and high temperature. The crop is mainly black and alluvial soil on which cotton grows. China, India and US are good examples. Jute is also known as golden fiber. It requires high temperature and high rainfall uh, with high humidity. Grow mainly on the alluvial soil. It's a tropical uh, plant. And then you have India and Bangladesh as the prime producers for jute. Under coffee, you require a warm and wet climate with loamy soil. So soil characteristics varies with, with each of the crops here. So as we said, cotton requires black soil. Jute with alluvial soil and coffee with a loamy soil which is much more uh, I could say uh, stickier than the other soils. Then you have Brazil, Colombia and India as a common example for coffee. Tea grows in a region where you have good rainfall throughout the year. So all 365 days you have uh, off and on showers and it's again a plantation crop that grows well into loamy soil, requires lot of labor. Uh, Kenya, India, China and Sri Lanka are the prime producers for tea. Now how has agriculture been developed in India or in the uh, various developing nations? So the prime requirement for developing agriculture is we need to increase the cropped area, 
the number of crops that are growing, the irrigation facilities, the amount of fertilizers and uh, mechanization should be involved. Now, the use of fertilizers and HYV seed was a prime requisite which was under the idea of green revolution that we will discuss in a further lesson when we talk about green revolution in detail. So, with these there were lots and lots of agriculture development and this green revolution came into two phases. So, we will understand the phases for the green revolution as well. Now, let us understand the concept of farming in India in contrast to America. So, let us say in India the average farm size is 1.5 hectare in contrast to America where there would be a farm size of 250 hectares. So, what would be the differences in the pattern of farming? Definitely in a small land size you would have a subsistence farming as compared to a huge land size where you might go for a you would definitely go for a commercial farming. Since it would be commercial it would be highly mechanized uh, you would employ a lot of uh, technology and machinery into it. However, in a country like India it would be definitely a labor intensive project because uh, easy availability of labor is again a prime requirement. So, you have subsistence farming that works around with easy availability of labor. So, this is a kind of contrast in the various agriculture patterns that you can see across the globe. In the next class, we will be discussing about the topic on industries. You can stay tuned for more lectures. Have a good day ahead.